stone mountains are not so easy to explain as some may think. Stephen Smith curiously writes that on every continent of this world, and other worlds for that matter like Mars, are examples of isolated stone mountains that are not so easy to explain. The idea that we are unfamiliar with our surroundings is a daunting realisation, but it's one that we must confront. For if we are not familiar with the place that we have developed as a species, then we cannot be at home and hidden truths must exist within our very being. If human beings are atoms, and the fabric of the universe and everything else is made up of atoms, then we are the universe becoming conscious, we are the universe studying itself, and we must also study our surroundings to understand the full journey of the human condition and why we have forgotten so much, so far. Wait till you hear this. Mount Augustus in Australia is an example of a sandstone monolith that could be the largest of these monoliths, which also includes Uluru. Mount Augustus, or Burungura to the local Wadjuri people, it's an asymmetric anticline resting on top of what geologists refer to as very old granite, and its composition differs markedly from the underlying rock strata. Benbulbin is another example of an isolated monolith, or tor, and these examples can be found on every continent, and they all share similar morphologies, although they are composed of different materials. Mount Augustus, for instance, is made up of rocks and pebbles of various sizes, cemented together by hard sandstone. In other areas of Australia, such as Bald Rock, the great blocks of stone are actually granite, resting on top of this continuous strata that does not match the overall structure of the rock. The geology of Ben Balboom is quite different, however. It is composed of Darty limestone, which makes up the Darty mountains, and shale overlying Glencar limestone. Ben Balboom is the headland of the Darty mountains, sloping gradually upward until the flat top mesa and steep, regularly carved cliff face stop at the edge of the ocean. The change from Benbulbin shale to Glencar limestone in the monolith is dramatic, the boundary layer is paper thin. In other areas of the world, such as the Pena de Bernal in Mexico, or the Rock of Gibraltar at the Pillars of Hercules, the single stones appear to be metamorphic, indicating a powerful energy source that drew the material in the mountains together, as well as melting and reforming their mineralogical composition. The Rock of Gibraltar is composed of metamorphous limestone and chalk. The Strait of Gibraltar itself demonstrates some remarkable topography and could mark an area where earth grazing electrical arts touched down and sculpted the entire region. Several other smaller monoliths can be found all over Europe, for example, the Logan Stone on top of Black Tor in Dartmoor and the King Arthur Stone in Cornwall are two of the most famous and at the summit of Mam Tor is another example of oddly piled stones and columnar formations. In other spots around the world can be found very large monoliths that are unlike the surrounding geography or geological formations. In Africa, the Brandberg Massive could be a gigantic fulgamite that was moulded and upraised by electrical forces. Other examples include Aso Rock in Nigeria and Ben Amira in Mauritania. Both are lone monoliths that appear to have been pulled up and out of the surrounding countryside. North America possesses quite a few large, rounded and isolated rock formations that bear closer examination. El Captain in California, Devil's Tower in Wyoming and Stone Mountain in Georgia are three examples of the strange terrain that require further investigation, but what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.